whatever reason the leader has for being the leader, they have to continue to strengthen that. If they try and switch reasons, they risk leaving that open for someone else to come along and take away. Okay? Every other player in the market has to position relative to the leader. If the leader, if you go back to your charts, if the leader is here, everyone else is positioned in the consumer's mind relative to the leader. Whether you like it or not. Why? Because the leader is the reference point. <coughs> yes? Now, the perception you create will stay in the mind of the consumer. Whether you do it yourselves or the market does it for you, it will stay in the mind of the consumer for the long term. An example is ever ready. Even 30 years after those black cat commercials or 20 years later, <coughs> people will still have a residual image of that black cat. Isn't that amazing? I haven't actually seen any advertising for Everready in God knows how long. And yet, you show me a black cat and I will say Everready. That's amazing. The, event, the, the work you have to do now is to decide what that should be. Because once you decide what that is, you better stick to it. So it needs a lot of rigor up front to make sure that you've done your job correctly up front. Because to go back and change it three years later is a very expensive and time consuming exercise. Right? Okay. Every way. Now this is where we talked about 360 marketing. Every touch point that your brand has with the consumer, whether it be packaging or price or promotion or advertising, in-store, um, outdoor, radio, whatever it is that you're doing, it has to be consistent. If it is not consistent with the brand positioning, you risk, at best, uh, confusing your consumers. And at worst, you can really piss them off. Classic example, Google stands for openness. Transparent society, that's what Google says, right? We're all about creating a transparent world where Everyone has access to every piece of information on the planet. Except in China, where we will allow the government to censor us and tell us that we can only visit these four websites. What happened as a result of Google's decision? They had major protests at their headquarters in the US. Because people said, you are Google. You stand for transparency and openness. How the hell can you allow a government to censor your, your search engine? It makes no sense. So now, two months later, Google is finally having talks with the Chinese government. Because they're, they're getting their butts kicked anyway. What is that Chinese? Uh, Baidu. Baidu, right? They are four times more, um, they do four times more searches than Google does in China. So Google has a, has a fairly good logical reason to actually leave China if they wish to. Because they're getting their butts handed to them. And they could use that excuse of, oh, well, you know, we don't, we're not able to offer transparency, blah, 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 therefore we're leaving. <coughs> so that could be an out for them. But it doesn't resonate with their brand positioning of transparency and openness and trust. This is how these things become very, very important.